You know, it's very interesting. I mean, there's a there's this kind of Tim, as you said earlier, Timothy Leary kind of socio cultural construct that ends up being overlaid over psychedelics. And what I think is that if you rid yourself of all of those preconceived notions of what it is and isn't and the counterculture movement, all that stuff that neither of us were ever involved in, neither of us are ever partake in, you know, is, is kind of straight scientists looking at this, right? If you can kind of rid yourself of all those sociocultural constructions and then re-examine this, these, if we just discovered these today, we would say that these sorts of drugs are a huge breakthrough in psychiatry because they allow for us to do a lot of the sorts of things we've been thinking about with with SSRIs, with psychotherapy, but kind of in combined, right? Psychotherapy plus plus drugs in a in a substance that kind of allows you to re-examine these things. And so it's it's interesting. It'll you know, there's a lot to do to try to figure out if that's true, you know. And and I can say that as it stands right now, we don't know if it's that statement is true, right? There's a lot more work that needs to happen for that statement to be proven to be true. But the hypothesis is if it is true, then it's very likely that this will be seen as a breakthrough because it allows you to do these sorts of things that you can't do with normal waking consciousness. But also why we have to really think about this and, you know, these drugs can't be recreational drugs. They really shouldn't be recreational drugs, right? They're really too powerful to be used in the context of recreation because they can put you into these states. And, and the, this generation of psychedelic researchers are really clear about that. You know, I think the 60s folks were not clear about that. And they, they felt like there was a, this whole kind of cultural thing that was going on there. But I think this cohort of individuals really understands that in order to really make this happen, we have to understand that if you need a prescription for an SSRI, which doesn't change your consciousness a whole lot, and we we're very worried about that, and the doctor has to evaluate you for that every week, that the idea that some of these substances would would go outside of of very strict medical supervision is uh, is kind of preposterous. Actually, it's kind of it's kind of a, a dumb moment, I think, for for all of medicine to say, look, we've you know, if we're going to do this right, we've got to do it in such a way that's so protected, that's so safe, that we make sure people know that these things are not recreational and they're really for the pure purposes of of really powerfully changing um, cognition for a while and letting people have these what seem to be, you know, relatively therapeutic states. I think it's great that you're doing this study and along the lines of the sort of the early iterations of psychedelics and the counterculture of the 60s and 70s, some of which took place like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, I think is actually yep. based on um, the Menlo Park VA, which is, yep, uh, right. you know, in our neighborhood of Stanford. Um, and things are quite a bit different now. I know um, we, you and I have spent some time with the operators and former operators at, at an event on Last Veterans Day, in fact, um, the so-called Veterans Solutions Group that's um, pioneering a lot of these psychedelic treatments for former special operators and current special operators. And what's interesting to me about that is in contrast to the counterculture movement of the 60s and 70s, um, that room was filled with people that are very much of a structure, the military, yep. Yep. right? So it's no longer um, considered left-wing, right-wing, anti-military, pro-military. Here, this isn't just but one group of people who's exploring psychedelics as a treatment for trauma and PTSD and other, other things. And of course, you also have other domains of society looking at this. And in fact, there were, but it was really interesting because there were both um, far left and far right politicians uh, at that event right. up on stage together right. talking about um, in kind of uh, lighter terms, heart medicine, but also talking about neurobiology and talk. It was just fascinating from a, from the perspective of somebody who's trying to learn about this stuff that psychedelic therapies no longer sit within the anti-establishment realm. It's, it's both, it's, it's, it's independent of all that. Um, certainly when people in the military are adopting it as a potential treatment, Absolutely. Again, still under exploration, but also under exploration at universities like Stanford and Johns Hopkins and That's UCSF right. and University College of London and on and on.